It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News Roundup. Uh, I'm Roland Boyden. This is 5.45 Live. Let's take a look at what's coming up on deck tonight. All right. Well, we'll start by uh, talking about all the Vermont Yankee happenings down in New York City. Uh, we've got uh, quite a lot from our surrounding communities, the Seven Town Summary. We'll talk about uh, the happenings at the co-op. Remember uh, the goal? To do it in 15 minutes or less. I bet we can uh, get away with that this time. So make sure you stick with us right here on 545 Live. And the judge, he's, he does a lot of note-taking, so I tried to get a picture of him looking up, but he's looking down a lot of the time. Welcome back to this uh, January 22nd, 2012 edition of 545 Live. I'm Roland Boyden. I'll be taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock. That's footage of courtroom sketch artist and longtime BCTV volunteer Deborah Lazar of Putney displaying her courtroom sketches from the Entergy uh, State of Vermont showdown in Brattleboro last year. Lazar again jotted the features of key players in the legal struggle as the case found its way to the Second Circuit last week. That takes us to New York City, where uh, the state's Second Circuit appeal of federal judge uh, Jay Garb and Murtha's ruling in favor of Vermont Yankee owners Entergy Nuclear, uh, a decision that overruled the state's Act 160 legislation set to close the plant at the end of its original 40-year license, despite a 20-year extension from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Now, the focus in the courtroom uh, uh, in New York last week was the financial impact of the plant's continued operation uh, and its impact on the state of Vermont, something uh, state lawyer David Frederick argued was the legislature's primary motivation for forcing the plant's closure, a purview that does not violate federal preemption. Now, uh, citing once more the state representative's numerous documented concerns about the safety of the plant, Entergy attorney Kathleen Sullivan stuck to uh, Entergy's original strategy. But after the expedited hearing, Vermont Attorney General Bill Sorrell emerged from the courthouse optimistic, uh, say uh, glowing even, over the result. Northampton Community TV caught up with him on the courthouse steps in the big city uh, to explain his decision to involve the nationally known expertise of David Frederick over the state's uh, own legal team. We've uh, got the clip. They've been so kind, uh, kind enough to share with us. Let's take a look. We've got some hugely smart and accomplished lawyers that we've had working close to 24-7 on these cases since it was filed. Uh, but here we are at the Second Circuit, it's a, it's a different league, and we wanted to fight fire with fire, and we went out and hired a guy who's nationally known and respected as among the best appellate uh, litigants in the country. And I'm really proud of what David did for Vermont today. Well, in true uh, New York fashion, a lot of sirens going off there, a little hard to hear, but uh, he talked about uh, just why it was so important to involve the best of the best uh, in the state uh, as they move forward trying to reclaim their control over the state's lone nuclear reactor. Now, uh, despite the uh, short length of the actual hearings, it could take up to six months to uh, hear back on the Second Circuit ruling, and some expect that this could go uh, higher up in the courts regardless of the result. Um, let's break it down for a moment, uh, looking back at all the Vermont Yankee happenings that we've documented here on 545 Live in the past year, get you caught up with a, a blazing fast jam-packed two-minute special uh, on all the VYVVT uh, events. Let's take a look. It's been a lot of Vermont Yankee in the media lately. At Vermont Yankee's headquarters off Putney Road, Brattleboro Police joined forces to facilitate the arrest of 130 individuals from over a dozen affinity groups. Your conduct is in violation of Title 15, Wildlife Trespass. Advocacy groups have turned their efforts to making public the discharge of hot water released into the Connecticut River by the plant's extensive cooling system. As objectors took to the river water in question by canoe, kayak, and pontoon to shake their oars at the plant's owners in the shadow of their waterfront property. Now, as nerve-wracked legislators ponder the implications of dry cask storage, 
You think the plant shuts down, but then you've still got the waste to deal with, and it's not good stuff. Task forces brace for the economic blowback from the plant's eventual closure, and politicians examine the sincerity of the plant's out-of-state owners. Louisiana is good at convincing Vermonters of things that aren't true. The fate of Vermont Yankee is still up in the air as Entergy awaits a decision from Vermont's Public Service Board over the issuance of a Certificate of Public Good, a requisite for continued operation upheld by Federal Judge Jay Garvin Murtha, despite his earlier verdict which overruled state legislation that would have closed the plant. It's an important case for us to appeal and long fight, okay. We'll end it there for now, though one could hypothesize that Vermont's lone nuclear reactor and its adversaries will return to the limelight again. Just a look at uh, some of 2012's Vermont Yankee happenings. Of course, we jam-pack it in there, but expect the headlines to continue all through uh, this next year. All right, uh, we're going to continue with our stories here, and uh, for that, we'll turn to Jamaica, and uh, perhaps turn to my close up again as well, why not really get uh, these HD cameras to put my complexion to shame here. All right, start, we'll start in Jamaica where a reformer article detailing local projects denied funds by FEMA was retracted in favor of a less inflammatory headline suggesting simply that FEMA now believes many of the town rebuilding projects following Tropical Storm Irene were never eligible for their financial support. To begin with, at their last meeting before the holiday, the Jamaica Select Board entertained a presentation from town uh, GCs for some of the projects to explain the gap between the town's filings with the state and the state's filings with FEMA. We've got that clip here. Let's uh, cue it up. So far, everything that we've sent to the state that they've gone on has been supported by the state, so yes, it definitely needs something to be looked at by FEMA. You can uh, catch that full broadcast uh, on BCTV's video on demand at RattleboroTV.org, where all local meetings from BCTV's seven surrounding communities uh, go up uh, in full length, though. The benefit of uh, watch watching online is you can queue it up at your leisure and maybe skip ahead in case the full three hours is uh, not what you're looking for. Um, now, of course, uh, we talk a lot about those seven surrounding communities that BCTV covers, but we also cover meetings right here in Brattleboro including the Brattleboro Select Board, where our next series of headlines take us. And we'll uh, prep it this way by saying, in a world of vicious political races backed by um, sometimes incomprehensible sums of money, it may come as a surprise to folks in this community that the coming Select Board race, which fe features three seats without uh, an incumbent, are short candidates to fill the position. Now, uh, speaking of the Brattleboro Select Board, uh, we're going to talk building a better Brattleboro in a moment, but first, uh, for those interested in joining the select board race and, and doing a service to democracy here on the local level, um, there's still plenty of time to get involved and uh, hopefully land us some candidates. We spoke to town clerk Annette Cappy about the importance of uh, this position. You do, that's really all we're looking for are candidates who, who care about where they live, where they make their home, and actually have an opportunity to change what happens in your life. Town Clerk Annette Cappy talking about uh, getting involved running for the ballot. All right, uh, speaking of the select board at last night's or at last week's regularly scheduled meeting, building a better Brattleboro got an earful um, uh, as the temperature continues to rise in town over the fate of the River Garden, something that prompted BABB board president Donna Simons to discuss frankly the organization's shortcomings. Let's take a look. We've admitted to our membership, we've admitted to you that we haven't done a good job of communicating. We have had successes and we have tried. Can we do better? Yes. And that's what our work plan is for FY14. The board's uh, slated to meet again tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. as uh, the uh, Building a Better Brattleboro Downtown District budget was not passed at their regular sch regularly scheduled meeting, uh, but put off to tomorrow's meeting. It'll be down downstairs from BCTV's 230 Main Street Studios uh, in the second floor select board meeting room if you care to attend again, 7.30 a.m. Uh, now most expect the budget will pass, though uh, they also expect some more chastising from the board. All right, uh, a few things to wrap up here. Cell phone tower saga and Newfane may be wearing thin for many, but the headlines continue after the Newfane select board. 
um, had word handed down from the state that the location of AT&T's proposed tower would not be open for de debate. Uh, residents have become embroiled in heated controversy over the aesthetic implications of the tower, which is slated to rest in residential neighborhoods. Safety concerns uh, of an area without cell phone coverage should another major storm incapacitate landlines across the region. At the Select Board's regularly scheduled meeting, Chair John Mack again turned the public attention to the delicate nature of AT&T, who, as he pointed out, has uh, a lone interest in this project, and that's from a business perspective. Let's take a look. AT&T at any moment in time can walk away from this. And I don't say that as a threat. No, I, as I say it simply as from their perspective, they look at it and they say, are we going to make more money than it's going to cost us? All right, a uh, few things to wrap up here. We're going to break it down on things coming up on BCTV. Take a moment to shamelessly promote uh, our own programming. Some really good programming this week on BCTV. Let's roll the intricate split screen here and start with uh, the Vermont uh, Governor's Award for the Arts. This was down at the Latches, and uh, it's going to show I'm this coming Saturday. Joe Gunther is going to Montpelier. I said, well, leave me at it. <laughs> Fantastic production. Be sure to check that out if you can. The Puzzle of New England Predators. This is a uh, lecture in Putney and an interesting one that's coming up. Uh, we playing all this week on BCTV Channel 8 as well. Let's, uh, let's get a little clip here. I've been seen in Boston. I've also been seen in Putney. Well, where is, where, you know. But that's, that's, how you, that's how you should think of an animal like the cougar. They've got a huge, huge range. All right, well, uh, Again, all local programming from BCTV shows uh, on our two channels. This here, BCTV uh, Channel 8, and our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. Of course, you can find all our local programming available online at brattleborotv.org as well. All right, that's full lit, everybody. Thanks for checking in with me here. Uh, we're going to end by taking a brief look at our Senator Bernie Sanders, courtesy of his YouTube channel, talking about uh, the impact of Wall Street's influence uh, in the nation's capital, suggesting that the uh, entitlements of people in lower income brackets uh, are inconscionable. He says it's just the opposite. This is the CEO of Goldman Sachs. And now, with his huge wealth, he is coming here to Washington to lecture the American people on how we have got to cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid for tens of millions of Americans who are struggling now to keep their heads above water. Stay abreast of uh, all Senator Sanders' latest information. Uh, it's Senator Sanders, all one word, is his YouTube channel where we get all our video as well. All right, thanks for checking in with me here. We'll be back Friday with another live broadcast right here on BCTV Channel 8 uh, at 5.45 p.m. In the meantime, I'm Roland Boyden saying good night, everybody. Lloyd Blankfein is the CEO of Goldman Sachs. In 2006 and 2007, he was the highest price, highest paid executive on Wall Street making over $125 million in total compensation. I find it literally beyond comprehension